Hello and welcome to the Epic Car Show. Now today I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how to clean your car as quickly as possible. But this one's going to be slightly different because what I'm doing is I'm actually going to dedicate this to you mobile car valeters out there. I'm going to show you tips and tricks to help you maximise your income and get a car done as quickly as possible. So one of the first things I want to talk about is being organised. Now being organised is one of the most important factors, especially when you want to be a mobile car valeter. You've got to get in, get out, and you've got to make the customer's life as easy as possible. They don't want to see you there all day faffing about with cables. So let me know if this sounds familiar to you. This is my van. Now I did a job on Friday, it was raining, I got everything soaking wet, and I thought, you know what, I've just got to go home, chuck everything in the van, and you forget about it over the weekend. So I've left it like this to show you, this is a common thing. I've turned up at the job, I've now got dirty cloths up there, I've got buckets which are half empty, which are really dirty, so they've got to be washed out. If you want to get a car done quick, you've got to be really organised. So leaving stuff like this is a real a terrible example, so just bear that in mind. Get stuff sorted out, especially when you're at home, when you do have free time, because this in itself is now going to set me back about 20 minutes. As you can see, my cables are all knotted up, and that's because I couldn't be asked to roll it up. So now I'm going to have to unravel everything and knot everything, and that in itself is going to take even more time. Okay, so now that I've got the van all sorted, I just want to now show you the setup just so you guys can see everything that you sort of need if you're going to be carrying out a standard valet or a mini valet or whatever you want to call it because that's going to be primarily the main focus of today's video. There is going to be a few things that I am going to go through and to be honest, if you are a full-on detailer, there is going to be a lot of methods that I'm going to go on about today that you guys are probably not going to approve of. So this is what I mean about being organised. Now, on the left-hand side of the van, I've got all my wet stuff. So I've got all my buckets, I've got my TFR, I've got my wheel cleaners, I've got my step, I've got my little brushes. Like, I've got everything that I need to do the outside of the car. I keep that all to one side. And then when it comes to the interior, I make sure that I keep my vacuum cleaner, I keep my rubbish bin, I keep my interior cloths, I keep everything sort of all together down this side. And the reason behind it is the fact that you want to get this mental visualisation in your head. So when you're cleaning a car, you're, you're going at like 100 miles per hour, you've got to think, right, I've got to go and grab the Huber, I've got to go and grab my interior brushes, I've got to get my cloth. Your brain is already sort of telling you signals that, right, I've got to go to the right hand side of the van. And when you do things on like the left hand side, you've got your washing part, your whole washing process it, it does help and honestly this could probably save you i don't care even if it's one to two minutes per valet after a year that does actually add up so i want you just to bear that in mind so when you're faffing about you're running all over the place just visualize where you're going to put things so for this i've already got all my brushes out that i'm going to be using on this valet because i've already had a look at the car and i know exactly what i'm going to need i've also simplified it so i've got a textile cleaner which is for your carpets I've got my multi-purpose cleaner for all the trim and plastics. And I've also got an air freshener. Apart from that, you don't really need a lot more, I suppose, unless if you want to start going down the route of actually dressing the car. But normally in a standard valet, that's something that you don't normally include. But I just want to show you what really sort of goes on behind the scenes because not everybody can do this 100% full-on detailing job. And I know that deep down inside, you're all going to say, look, I really want to do a great job for this customer. But at the end of the day, if they're not going to pay the money, why do they deserve you to do all that effort on their car? Okay, so now the first thing that we really have to do is get this car empty. So what we've got to do is get all the rubbish out, get the mats out so we've got a blank slate to work with. So what I like to do when I clean the car out is be organised. So we've got lots of little loose bits laying around here. So it's really important that you bag it up because what that's going to do is save you time moving it left and right when you're trying to hoover the boot out. So now we've got a completely empty car, it's time to start the washing process. So the first thing that we're going to do, which for me, I think is the most important thing first, is the wheels. So we're going to do this side first and then we're going to switch over to the other side. And then straight after that, what we're going to do is just roll back the car 30 centimetres so we can do the underside of the wheels because it's nice to see that you've actually spent the time 
going through the whole wheel because there's nothing worse when you finish a car and you roll it forwards or repark it and you see bits that you missed and customers don't appreciate that either so make sure you get it done so normally the first thing that comes to mind when you clean the wheels is the fact that you have to give it a good rinse and put a fallout remover on it and use real specialist chemicals however when you're doing a mini valet and you have to get a car done within an hour that sometimes just isn't viable and the reason I say that is because the cost of fallout removers and specialist wheel cleaners like some of the ones that I always use in my videos is the fact that they're mighty expensive and when you're doing a mini valet and I'm just going to give you an example the mini valets on average across the UK are sort of around 30 to sort of 35 pounds you're not really going to have a lot of money left over because you have to use quite a lot so I'd say it's going to cost you about four or five pounds on product alone just to do the wheels so what is your best option well getting yourself a good traffic film remover is job number one now if you get a ph neutral one there are plenty out there but like i'm using one from auto smart i think it's a really good product to use and you've got to remember this now i just want to put this into your head when you say you're going to clean the wheels on a mini valet or a standard valet do you mean the inside or just the faces because this is where a lot of people can sort of get like cross paths for me when I do a mini valet I would only really do the insides if I knew that the wheels were pretty much immaculate and I knew that you know it wouldn't take a few minutes to do it I think you've got to bear that in mind when you're listing what you're doing on your services page or whatever you've got to make sure that you put down and be very clear and precise so the customer knows that they are only getting the wheel faces cleaned so I understand better oh for fuck's sake jet which is going off we'll edit that bit out Look, I understand how important it is that you have to normally rinse off the wheels and then put a fallout remover on and do it all properly. I totally understand that. But when you're doing a mini valet and you're doing things say like your Ford Fiestas or your VW Golfs, those types of people don't care about that. They probably don't even care about the two bucket method either. For them, it's all about the convenience that you turn up to their house and you get the job done. So what I've done for this car is I've put a TFR on the wheels. I'm not even gonna scrub the tires because the TFR alone should be good enough to get rid of the majority of the dirt. So as I previously mentioned, your idea of clean wheels and the customer's idea of clean wheels may be completely different. They may expect the full brake dust removal and you have the idea of just doing the wheel faces. So if you're not clear, you're not gonna give yourself much of a chance. You're actually gonna give yourself more problems. So when they aren't happy with the wheels, they're only gonna come back to you and complain. So just bear that in mind. Okay, so I wanna talk about this dilemma that people have. So when they do mini valets, they just the perfectionist in them always comes out and they see bits like the insides, even though they've said, you know, we're just gonna do the faces, but they see the inside and they see a little bit of dirt and they're thinking, do you know what? I probably could get it out quickly. If that is the case, then seriously go for it. If you've got heavy baked on brake dust, obviously that's different and that requires a more in-depth valet. So make sure that you tell the customer and they actually understand that. For this, I've got some trade wheel cleaner and I will put a link in the description below where you can get it from. And I'll just basically soak the wheels and give them a little brush because it, it doesn't really need a lot. So it's not gonna take you a massive amount of time. So when I see cars like this, I see a real good opportunity because you've got a massive area here where you can get any sort of brush through. So, I mean, you can be very anal and use your wheel willies. I mean, these are brilliant. They can get around anything. But when you've got like massive gaps like this, when you're doing mini valets, I sort of see a job and I'm like, do you know what? Why don't I just chuck the giant toothbrush on? So I'll get the old Vicam brush. And like I said, it can fit in any, like, any massive gap. I mean, it's just brilliant and it really does clean the wheel up very quickly. So make sure you do get yourself one of these. And again, I'll put a link in the description below where you can find them from, but we all know it's Amazon. So just remember this, you're not going for perfection. We're just going to tidy up the wheels. You can't get off every single bit of brake dust if you're doing a 35 pound mini valet. You simply can't do it. So you either got the option of telling the customer saying, look, it will cost a little bit more if you want me to do the wheels even better and go for the heavier stuff. Or we can just leave it as that. And if they're gonna be using their car as a daily driver to London, that's nine times out of 10, that's probably the case. So as you can see, the wheels, when I rolled the car backwards, even though I thought they looked perfect originally, 
there are still bits that I've missed. So it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter how good you think you are, there's always going to be the odd little bit that you could miss. So like I said, it's very important that you do roll the car back, just say 30 centimetres, just so you can tidy up. So before you say, oh, you don't know what you're doing, I genuinely want you guys to see these mistakes so you can sort of live and learn the process as you go along. Now, you are going to make a million and one mistakes as you go along. It's part of nature, but I've been doing this 15 years, so there's still things that even I'm learning to this day. With the wheels all taken care of, it's now time to get that bucket out the way. And the reason being is you don't want to be tripping up over it. It can be a hazard. It can get in the way. There's no reason to come back for that bucket you don't need to use the brushes if you've done your job properly you shouldn't need that at all for the rest of the valet so now by this point you should be thinking shall i get the snow foam out the answer to that is simple no and the reason being is because it is a mini valet now we all know that that detailer mind of yours says right i really have to get this done properly we have to snow foam it it's quite satisfying it's therapeutic you have to throw all that out the window straight away. At the end of the day, we're just giving this car a quick clean. So for me, I, I recommend this anyway, like a TFR around the lower third of the vehicle is normally all you need, unless it's a VIP car or a Bugatti Veyron or something like that. But nine times out of 10, you're not gonna get those cars. So as much as you wanna do the snow foam, it's really time consuming because you're starting, you're stopping, you're connecting the bit, you're taking it off with this, TFR the whole car or TFR like one side at a time depending on the temperature once you've used this get it out of the way and it's one less thing to worry about you're not going to be faffing going backwards and forwards to the machine changing bits it will make your life a lot easier so I know you might not want to do it this way but when it comes to mini valets and getting the job done as quick as possible this is the best option. So now we've got that part of the process done, we can now get rid of the TFR and the TFR can get the heck out of the way. So now it's just you, your pressure washer and your bucket. So this is the part of the show where you can leave your negative comment because I'm about to do the one bucket method. And the reason I'm doing this is because when you're doing a standard car and the owners don't really care about it that much, they just want it clean, they're really not that fussed about it. Then I think it's really important that you know when you should and shouldn't use it. So for this one, all you wanted was a quick clean up. Like I said, this is gonna be a 35 pound job on average. So I have actually got a grit guard, even though it makes me look like Doctor Strange. It's a really cool thing to have. And if you're doing the one bucket method, at least have one of these. I mean, you can even get these on AliExpress, and dare I say it, for 70p. So I've got lovely weather today, it's nice and cool. I've got no worries about the car drying, so I could probably get around the whole car before it dries. But what I normally do is do at least one side at a time. So based on the weather and the fact that we're now in October and it's cooling off a bit, I can easily get this left hand side done, rinse it and then switch back over to the other side. So I'll start off again by rinsing, sudding and then rinsing. The reason I'm doing this is because I get lots of messages with valeters saying every day they have to do a £25 valet and they have to do the two bucket method. And it takes them about three hours to do a car and they simply can't make any money. And I always say to them, look, if you're going to do the two bucket method, then at least charge a fair rate for yourself. Think about it. The customers are getting a bargain. At the end of the day, it's your time driving there, your fuel, your money, your time also washing the cloths at night is your chemicals, your equipment. You simply cannot do a two bucket method on such a cheap valet. So please tell me if I'm wrong, if I'm taking things out of context here, because I solely believe that the one bucket method is sometimes the only choice that you're going to have if you're doing this business. Now, if you've got real top end valets, it's fine, obviously you could use two, but if you're on a low budget and you're trying to compete with the competition, you don't have a choice. You simply do not have a choice. Please let me know in the comments below. Please let me know if you're struggling or you're doing the one bucket method or it takes you hours and hours to do a standard valet. I'd love to hear your feedback. And we've also got a Facebook group called The Detailing Network. If you join that group, you can interact with people such as yourselves who are in the business and they're just starting out. And it's great to get to know people and share some ideas. So don't forget to check it out. And I'll put a link in the description below. Okay, so I've now finished the car from the top section doing both sides. Now I'm gonna finish it off by doing the lower third of the car with the wash mitt. And then last but not least, we're gonna finish it off doing the door shuts.
Right on cue. It has started raining and now that means one thing. I can either A, leave the car as it is, or B, try and dry it. Now I know that sounds completely bonkers. We've only got a bit of light rain at the minute, so it's not gonna be impossible. But a lot of people think, oh, do you know what, it will just dry naturally. That's not the case because not everybody has filtered water. Again, you might have left a bit of chemical and there might have been a bit of suds and you don't really want it drying out. So the best thing you can actually do is try and do one panel at a time. And I'm gonna show you, but instead of purely just using the microfiber towel, I'm gonna get, well, I'm gonna get a lot of stick for this. I'm gonna suggest you use one of these. Now this is a synthetic leather, even Autoglin make these as well. Now I know there's gonna be a lot of people out there who are gonna argue the fact that yes, these can cause scratches. Well, they might have a little point, but what they're saying is you could probably cause scratches on a microscopic level. So when you've got cars like this, honestly, he's had flipping more accidents in Prince Philip. Like every single couple of weeks, it's getting a respray for something. Although this is a nice car, it's a lovely car, don't get me wrong, he simply doesn't care about it that much. Now, I don't personally think that you are going to cause scratches. If it is, then it's going to be on a microscopic level. The point is, if the human eye can't see the mark, does it really matter? So because it's actually raining right now, we can't actually go for perfection. So all we can do is get the very best out of it. So what I am going to suggest is you do one panel at a time. So with this, I'm doing one bit with a flunky, and I'm going to follow it up with a microfiber towel. Once I've done that panel, that is it. There's no going back. There's no putting any chemicals on it. There's no putting any more towels on it. And the idea is by doing that, you're going to get rid of any unwanted water which isn't rainwater, which is stuff from your tank or you're going to get rid of any chemical residue that you might have left on so this right here is a flunky now these are very versatile and what's brilliant about them is they're so light and they can absorb so much water so it's oh they just they're just incredible they're really good now i know like i said you're going to get you might get a microscopic defect but that's if you're being so flipping anal about it so like in the rain like i've said like i've said a million times I run it over with a flunky and then I get a towel and that's pretty much it like if you can't put a quick detailer on afterwards because it's going to be sitting in the rain for the rest of the day then don't just leave it at that if that's the best you can do with and you haven't got a marquee or anything that's just the nature of the business and your customers will have to understand that as well and I'm sure they will do right so now we've got the bodywork done it's time to go onto the glass now I know what you're thinking why are you doing the glass now? Because you could be making a mess. Well, that is very true. But what happens when you've got a really hot, sunny day? So you've washed the car, you've dried it, and the temperature of the glass starts getting warmer and warmer. What happens is you will find, that you, even by using this, you still might occur the odd smear. It's not something that's gonna be completely bulletproof. When you're doing your mini valets, like you don't go mad with the chemicals anyway. It's basically a wash, a vac and a general tidy up so you're not going to be squirting this with loads and loads of chemical worst case scenario you're going to be just wiping it with a damp towel with a little bit of chemical on it so i say get the glass over and done with and that's one less thing to worry about now if you haven't seen my glass cleaning tips video before do go check it out and i'll put a link in the description below and also put a link up here for you to go check out but do watch till the end of this video because i've got so much important tips that i want to share with you guys so this is my glass cleaning one Basically, all it involves is a fresh, clean flunky, bucket of water, give it a wipe, like so. And what it would do is it would remove a lot of the grease and it gets absorbed in here, so you can always wring it straight out. Once you've done that, just get a microfiber towel and get it dry. No chemicals, no smearing, no mess, no problems. One happy customer. So I've now finished that, and as you can see, there's nothing else around the car. And this is what I mean. Get all your stuff out of the way. So I've put all my little bits just down here, all my wash stuff, that's all out of the way. Now when it comes to doing the inside, all I need is my interior cleaner. I can grab my cloth and I can grab my brush. That's it. So I've got my three main tools. So everything's close to hand. Now I just need to grab my vacuum cleaner. But it just shows you by simplifying the whole process, it just makes things so much quicker for you. And it saves you faffing around. And now I'm going to pull the hoover out and I'm not going to have to worry about tripping up over any wires. Everything's going to be straightforward. And I know you can argue the fact that, yes, I've got a big area around me today, but it's still a method that is going to help you 
get the job done a lot quicker. So look, just bear it in mind, get your stuff out of the way. Now I've got an empty car to work on, it shouldn't take five minutes. So if you're offering a mini valet, and a basic one at that, what you should do is keep it simple. So I've got my brush, got my chemical, and I've got my cloth. So I've sprayed a bit onto the cloth, and like I said, I've already done the glass. So now all you're gonna really be giving it is just a quick wipe over and a dust over as well. And there's not really a lot more to it than that. I mean, if they want a full valet, then they have to pay for a full valet. You can't just be giving it all away for nothing because you're never gonna make any money at the end of the day. It's all about the sort of business approach that you're gonna be taking towards your business. If you don't charge, there's no point in doing it. You can't just do it for free. And this is a really good cleaner, by the way. This is Yum Interior. And it is just the absolute best. There you have it guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope you found it inspiring because there's so many people out there who get told, yeah, you've got to do it a certain way and look, there is a way that you should do it but when you're doing this in a business sort of platform there's only so much you can give so you've got to remember that especially when you're talking to your clients and you've got to be very clear about what you're going to be offering because you don't want to start shooting yourself in the foot. To them, if you say, right, I'm going to clean your wheels they might be thinking, yeah, he's gonna decontaminate it, do the whole lot. They don't understand the process that is actually involved in it. So do bear these little things in mind. I know I'm gonna get stick for this video. I know it's very controversial as well, based on some of the methods. But when I got started out, if I didn't do these methods, I wouldn't be sitting here right now telling you about it because I wouldn't have a business, because there's no way I could keep the consistency up. I just wouldn't make any money. I would be ruined by now. So unfortunately is a way you should do things, but it's not always a way that you really can do things. If that makes sense, I'm trying to sort of simplify it. So like, I hope you can take something from this video. Stay tuned because we've got another one coming very soon. And look, I'll put a link in the description below for all the videos that I've mentioned in it and all the products as well. So do go check them out and I'll see you very soon for another video. Take care, bye bye.